Hey, what's up? Welcome back. I gotta read a script. The Phaserville Suite Firmware version 1.10 comes with expanded MIDI mapping and more flexible bullshit. More flexible CV or MIDI modulation, input, assignment, and configuration. Anyway, let's take about five minutes and I'll show you around. Welcome to Phaserville. <laughs> Hi friends, sorry it's been so long. I got a little bit burnout. My brain is turning to mush and I also kept putting off all of the ideas for videos. I don't know, I can't even like think in this room anymore. It's not clean. I, I need to clean. I've just been putting off making videos so there's a lot of ideas that have built up and I'm coming to terms with the fact that I can't do them all at once, right? So. We'll just try to do a little bit at a time. Hello. Do we want the microphone in the shot? So here we are. Um, would you like to develop a synth? Because uh, I've been I've been developing a synth. I can show you the screen up here. So you can see the screen while I show you things. I have a plan for version 2.0, but we're not there yet. Anyway, version 1.10. MIDI input mappings, you now have 32 slots where you can configure all kinds of different settings, a specific CC value on a specific channel, pitch, bend, gate, note on specific channels. Anyway, these are all MIDI filters that capture certain incoming MIDI signals. And then all the different M MIDI maps can then be used for the inputs to all the applets. Any MIDI mapping that you set up can be used as the, the clock or gate trigger signals, as well as the CV input signals. And all of them can be attenuverted. So there's a maximum range of 448%, that's just how it worked out. And you can also invert it. So make it affect something negatively, or you know, in the opposite direction. And that applies also to the regular CV, like these are the, the physical CV inputs can be attenuverted by that much. And then internal routing, so the output of another applet, such as E, can be rerouted to the input of a different applet. Anyway, that's the exciting new thing, so there's massive new potential for internal routing, rerouting things, and the attenuversion is kind of a big, a big deal. Just a quick note about Teensy 3.2. Space is extremely limited, so there's only eight MIDI maps, and some settings won't be saved, like a, the Atenu version. From here on out, I'm really just trying to take advantage of the power and expanded storage space on the Teensy 4 series. If you weren't aware, Teensy 4.0 can be a drop-in replacement on the original OC hardware. On the Teensy 4.1, we also have this audio subsystem inside of most of these applets you can map modulation inputs using any of the physical CVNs, any of the outputs from the other applets, any of the MIDI mappings. So all of those things are available to be used for input modulation and every single one can be attenuverted. It's an exponential curve so you can get more precise at the lower values so you get one 0.1%, 0.2%, blah, 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 blah. Kind of dial it in down here around 10%. And then once you get higher, it gets more dramatic, you know? So that's kind of cool. Input mapping flexibility has really evolved. The problem now is that the entire system is so complex. There's so much complexity crammed into this thing now, which is a gift and a curse, you know? Gift and a curse. You can do so much in just 10 HP. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Well, I hope you have fun dialing in your modulations. Please support me if you can, and maybe I'll run into you at KnobCon.
What's up? What's up? I, I, I'm such a dork.